Praise the Lord. Amen. I know all of us, we, our Father yeah, impacted us one way or the other, either positively or positively, because we are in the church. Amen. So we have to I have a friend of mine. He, his father, when we were growing up, his father, will, in fact, they will come and wake them up that your father is in the gutter. He has been mm. drunk over wow. the people mm. and he grew up like that. So he didn't have a good. Today, by special grace of God, they see 12 years and then it's like that. That's why I've been on phone while I'm there. People were chatting me on the first summer. After I think I remembered in the morning and in the evening, I forgot. Wow. So I need to send some thanks to people that seem to give people. But like I was saying, telling people that growing up, I never knew, I mean, that my father would just take me to all Christian gatherings. Mm. If the prophet is coming, they want to come and do uh, revival. Uh, Above father is coming, we say people should come and lodge in our house. We will always complain. Because we have our room, the moment these people come, they will shift us to another place. We sleep in parlor, sleep in the passage, you never love it. Abiara is coming. It's, yeah. Baba Abiye Ede is coming. Yeah. And so we, we are like moving like that. But I remember at the age of seven, he called me. I can still remember faintly. He went somewhere to buy a bell. I go, mm. and he, he woke me up. I always sleep in the parlor, you know, we have a parlor, and then I was still peeing in those days. And so we have the chair, the one that have cushion that you can remove like yes. this. It's still like that. When you pee on one, you turn it on that. You know, and, um, <laughs> but he woke me up one day, he gave it to me. He said, you know, I'm a polygamist, mm. and I don't know what I'm going to do to you. And he gave me the bell wow. at, the end of, at the age of seven. And so I, what the bell is that I wake everybody up in the morning. Mm. 5 a.m. I must wake everybody up. Mm. And so it became, it was when I sat down there, I saw how far God had helped me. Mm. He took me to all the prophets. When he realized that this man is a man of God, is a prophet of God, he will not take any member of the family to his bed. Mm. He will take the member of the Lord. Help me to lay hands on him. So I don't know how I got to this level with prayers and prophetic and other things. I don't know. But when I sat down here, I just said, it didn't start today. Anyway, yeah. I don't know yeah. what my daddy yeah. saw and gave me the bell. And it's a thing I'm grateful for. Thank you, Jesus. They say one thing in Yoruba, they say, if they train a child up with prayers, it will be years of the truth. Oh, yeah, that's no right. Of I, yeah, I yeah. veered off, yeah. of course. Mm -hmm. Then I came back and I thank God. So I'm grateful for that because I don't know where I would have been. Polygamous housewives and all other things. Maybe that would, I would have been dead by now. Then the first song, like I said, but I give God the glory. Hallelujah. And I remember you for that. Hallelujah. God bless you, sir, for that powerful contribution. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When my sister was talking about fathers were going on and on. My heart was, I was crying because I missed my dad. Um, I remember when we were growing up, 5 a.m., my father would wake us up with Koboko. Everybody, no matter how little you were, you must we must learn our memory verse. Let me tell you that we were born in the north. From age four, there was no school. You know, good school in the north. So they would send us to Lagos to my maternal grandfather. And he heard about the apostolic faith in the north. And he told grandpa that from age four, they accept children. They pick children for Sunday school. So please make sure they pick them up for Sunday school. So, so from age four, the boss will pick us, go to Sunday school, and he makes sure that all of us get involved in one thing or the other in the church, in the children's church. When we started, when he started training children for you know um, music, we all started with recorder. You know this wooden recorder and stuff like that when they are doing a teamwork in church we will make sure we go to church you cannot carry anything big but even if it's a a, a small thing you must be part of the work in the church and that 
you know, Lee established us in the church. And, you know, later they moved to Lagos, actually, for him to oversee all that. I remember he would wake us up in the morning, 5 a.m. You must learn your Sunday school lesson, uh, memory verse. You must pray, even if it's uh, Jesus save our soul. It's enough for him. Mm -hmm. You must say something. So, but you know, children, when you start growing up with all those um, uh, training, you yeah. feel they are being wicked to That's you. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, so at a time, my father doesn't want to see pants. You cannot wear pants in my father's house. <laughs> but I used to, when, when we want to go out, when we have to go to a function, we, myself and my sister has only one friend to my father. If her grandmother didn't die, her great-grandmother would be having something to do. So we always say, eh, Baba Chris, eh, comfort, eh, this and so. We always lie on her so that we can go out. Yeah. He knows her very well. When we are going out, we wear the nice things to go out. My friend lives at, you know, very close to the bus stop around the house. We will go there, we change. Coming back home, we'll change and come back home. But my dad always says something, that wherever you go, my eyes goes with you. Mm -hmm. I left his house one day, and I went to Ibadan, going for Ibadan. He didn't know. I lied, I was going to my auntie's house. On my way to Ibadan, I saw an accident. Mm -hmm. And right there, my heart just got broken, I said, what if I was the one they were taking out of mm. this accident? My father doesn't know where I was going. Nobody, I lied to him. I went, but when I left home, my father sent someone to my sis aunt and said to call me back. Mm. But meanwhile, I traveled. Mm. So when I got home, they told me, ah, Baba sent somebody to come and call you. I said, but I told him I was coming here. So I went to him on Monday, and he said, where were you? I said, I was at Ebutemeta uh, with uh, He said, hmm, hmm, I'm telling you, wherever you go, and my mind or my heart doesn't go with you, is dangerous. Mm -hmm. That immediately you left me, mm -hmm. God told me mm -hmm. you were going somewhere that I I'm not aware of. Wow. My father is, doesn't go to a large right church to see vision. But he said, wherever you go, my eyes always go with you. So when I was leaving home, Nigeria, to go to London, I was so excited. I said, ah, thank God I'm leaving so that I, will, I can do my you own can thing. your life, yeah. yeah. But months, just two, three months after I got to London, I became so sick, I was dying. I was in the hospital bed. Before I left, he told me, I don't have money to give to you, but one thing I'm giving you, and that is Jesus. Mm -hmm. We have our church in London. Look for it, and it will do you good. I said, okay, sir. So, but I was doing my thing, but I was on the hospital bed. And I remembered him. I remember this last word. Mm. And I said, God, if you can deliver me mm. and don't allow me to die on this hospital bed, I will go, I will serve the God of my father. Mm. So anytime I, I see myself where I am, I am today, mm. I'm always grateful mm. for my father. Mm. My mother was weak. When we tell her anything, it's okay. Wow. <laughs> but my father was the strict one. People in London feel I don't have a mother until they saw their picture. You don't love your mom? I said, yes, I love my mom. But my father always hit it hard that there's no way I can forget him. Mm. I'm grateful Thank you, Jesus. for my father. Power, power, power. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Good, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. My is question to, it's going to be a question to all of us. You are very caring as a father. You love your children. You love your wife. You're doing everything you're supposed to do. But your own father did not do much anything for you. And because of that, I don't want to use the word hate. And uh, you don't really want to forgive him because of what he did. And you love your own children. You love your wife. My question is this. Is it possible to say, I love my children, they are doing fine, but you hate your parents, your father, or mother? How can we, is this something we have to reconcile? Or we should just allow it just to go like that? God bless us. Thank you, sir, for that. That's a good question. Matter of fact, it's a great question. But well, God is telling you that you have to forgive your father. For you to see the light all the way down the tunnel, you have to forgive your father. I don't know where he is right now. If you can reach him, call it's not, him. It's not my own father. Oh, it's not? My, okay. But I'm the carbon, so copy, every, yeah. I'm the carbon, carbon copy of my father. I love my father. I'm just throwing it. Oh, you just throwing because it. Because I had a lot of people that are saying that no, mm. I will not let it go. Mm. I had a lot of okay. people like that. But what can we do in a forum okay. like this? It's okay. not one. Okay. 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 I mean, okay. that's, it's not my father. Okay. I love my father. So that would just like, you know. Yeah, but well, anyway, it's a great question still. Yeah. But the answer to that is you have to reach whosoever that you know that has that problem. Encourage that person to forgive their yes. father. I mean, deeply encourage them. Seek the Lord face if they cannot do it on their own, because wow. definitely it's a, it's very hard. Mm -hmm. You know, we cannot forgive on ourselves most of the time. Mm -hmm. If you don't know the Lord, you cannot do it on your own. Mm -hmm. You have to seek the face of the Lord mm -hmm. for Him to help you. Mm -hmm. Seek and ask the Holy Spirit. That's what we have here. When Jesus was leaving. When he resurrected, he said, I have to go so that I will, you know, they and send us a helper to come and help us. It's because of that the Holy we have the Holy Spirit. Because when things are very, very hard and difficult, you turn to the Holy Spirit to and ask him to help you with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul. And when you do that, he knows your heart. He knows how sincere you are and he will help you. To forgive your father or whosoever again you need forgiveness from you. Amen. I would like to add to that. Um, no matter how bad your father is, if they bless you, you are blessed. Yes. Because God calls them our small God. Whether they, I don't know, people tell me, ask me that question too, and I tell them, whatever, you can only know they don't love you or they don't do anything for you after you have grown. Yeah. When you are a baby, when you were a baby, they had done stuff for you. Mm -hmm. Even carrying you at a particular at, at one time or the other as well. So whether when you now grow old or older, you now realize he didn't take care of me, he did nothing for me, that does not matter. If you disrespect them, it's a cause on you. I hear some people say they will put money uh, in 241k because the children of nowadays they don't they won't take care of you so you better do a 401k so that uh, you can take care of yourself children 
must take care of their parents. Amen. If it's one dollar mm. you give to them and they say, God bless, God bless you, you, you are blessed. Yeah, that's it. When I got to London newly, my very first uh, letter I got, I looked at my parents' picture and they, they, they grown old suddenly. I cried and I put some money, I didn't, I wasn't working, I was a student, mm. you know, and just do menial jobs. I put some money and I sent it home. And my father got the money and he now wrote me a letter. He said, as at that particular moment, he got the money, he was praying to God to give them something that they would eat. Wow. He said, as I'm writing to you, I'm crying, wow. thanking God. Wow. He said, when they told me, come into the church office and said, you have a message and from me. At that time, he said he was wondering, how did he get, he is not going, he promised that he was not going to tell anybody that they were in need. Mm -hmm. He said, so that Sunday, they called him and they gave him the envelope. He saw the money, he busted out and said, God, you said you will do something for me. You are going to surprise me. He never believed it would come from me because I got to London, you know, I was still new. And since that time, I made it a point of duty to make sure whenever anybody is going home, there wasn't no phone or cell phone or anything at that time. So, and I am standing today, I went through a lot. But his prayer, I believe, mm. is upholding me. That's right. So if anybody has a father that feels your father didn't do anything for you, therefore you're not going to care about him. You are undoing your that person is undoing himself or herself. That's right. Mm. You must receive a blessing of your father. Yes. Mm. It is a must. Yes. If they are still alive. When they tell you you are blessed, you are blessed. You're blessed, that's right. Amen. May God help us. Amen. Amen. Powerful, powerful. Powerful, powerful, awesome. Ah. Mm. Mm. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. But I'm going to be very brief. I see you're looking at the time again. So my own is contribution, and I have a funny question to ask. So the contribution I want to give is that um, I learned a lot from my dad. <coughs> Not from the word of the He told me, but from his lifestyle. Wow. You know, when I was growing up, I always see people tell my dad, they trusted him. They can tell him anything. People around him keep money with him and collect it two months, three months. You know, he doesn't take commission, nothing, they'll just get their job and he will keep it. When you need your money, he will bring it out and give it to you. That my dad can fix anything in the house. And that's why today, when something gets there, let that come. Wow. And when I come, I'll yeah. fix it. Hallelujah. <laughs> so, you need a responsible life. Mm -hmm. And we talk a lot with my gist partner. My wife met him, and we miss him for that gist a lot. I can stay with my dad till 1 a.m. at night, outside sitting, just gisting. Wow. Nothing, just gisting. So, I learned from his experience, his life, how he became. And I know that people love him, people respect him. I'm like, I want to be like this man. I want to live a life of impact yeah. like him. So most of the time when we are raising these kids, they look up to us as a yeah, role model. That's right. Not from what we tell. You can tell a child to do it, and they will do it out of respect or fear. Mm -hmm. yeah. But looking at you as a dad, they will say in the man, and if it's him, you will not, you will not pay the plane to. <laughs> you know, and if it's him, you will not do it out of his You know, so let's be your life as an example let our life yeah, walk, walk the talk yeah. and just be glad so that's that. my contribution because yeah. that's what i love most about my dad the yeah. way he lives he doesn't drink he doesn't smoke and people say ah he's a responsible man also that's raising over 40 i don't drink i've never drink, i've never smoked before Thank not that i drank or i smoke and i stopped mm. i never i don't know how beer tastes like mm. i don't know how cigarette feels like mm. because of my dad mm. and he never told me don't drink or don't smoke. No, yeah. didn't tell me. So, mm. that, so the question I want to ask is because of my wife. 
Anytime I want to hug her from behind, she will say, I want my own baby. If I want to ask, please, you know, we need to settle this. Maybe this is the reason why we came. We need to settle this one. Is it right? It is funny, but it is it because me, I'm very restless. I'm playful, you know. And we have four kids. Totally like a teenager is even among them. So sometimes she's cooking and I just want to go. So I need that side, don't be on the shower. Oh my god. Pray. Pray for you. Pray for you. The Bible says the man and his wife were naked and they were not ashamed. The man, the emphasis is on the one, the man and his wife, not their friend, not woman friend, not prostitute, but the wife, and they are not ashamed. You cannot be ashamed when you are holding, irrespective of whom that is there, because number one, number one. It was done legally and biblically. The Bible says, beg on the farm. Mm, yes. You did that. You did not defy that beg. Okay. Now that you now have the liberty, I don't think the wife, most of the time it's very common to our women. And you, they are the one that says that you men are no romantic or whatever. But most of the time, they do that a lot. Somebody is there, somebody. I don't care if anybody is there. During the time that God said, bear on the path. I kept that. You complied. I complied. So, I'm doing it according to the will of God. I cannot stop myself that time. Stay away from me during that time. Now that God has not given you unto me as liberty, you are now telling me that my own children are dead. He says something that not only by saying, he lied the Lord from his father by the action. How do you want your children to be romantic? They will think it's an abomination for the man to hold. The wife, God bless her. Praise the Lord. I see that we, I mean, in my, I am a person that I like hugging people a lot. Even not, not my, people know that when I'm busy, I want to put my hands on, I just pray God will help me in, in America so that they won't share my last same people. I like hugging people. That's just the way I've been, I, I was brought up that way. You, you can't be in the midst of girls, growing up with girls, you must hug this because, and so my children, I have three girls by the grace of God. I hug them. All. I say, I love you. In fact, it can be, only God knows how many times. We had the time out um, uh, on Tuesday, and so the three girls, they were sitting, seated before the mom went to work, and the youngest one was asking some, the kind of question you can't ask your parents when you're in school. Yeah. <laughs> Daddy, did you love mommy? Yes. Why is it that you people don't kiss? Ah. I said, oh, she said, how did you how did you make us? Well, I said like what do you mean? <laughs> so, you, need, you don't kiss. So how do you make us? <laughs> so the holiest one in college said, ah, nah, 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 you can't. Daddy don't answer that question. So let me answer it. <laughs> Cause my, I got married to my wife, Spirit Coco from I've been there. <laughs> no no boyfriend. I'm the whole, I'm the first boyfriend, the only boyfriend, no, no party, no anywhere. I like touching people. When I told you, it's not you that they know that is in the race. I don't want to I We hold it in our body. That's the way. Sometimes you want to talk to us. Don't you know? They are looking at us. They are, exactly like that, too. We are going on the road. I want to hold our hands. Must you hold my but can't you walk in? You know? Now we are in America, you said I should hold your hands. I me too. I said no. I'm not holding hands again. We held our holding hands and pass. Now she started the Lord oh you. God. Your background, you know, when you when you are SU growing up. Uh, you see all the people that are 30, 
there are some people about that and other things. And for women that allow their husband, not that we are saying you are loose, but the thing is this our women will change. Amen. Uh, our women will change. Amen. Actually, I'm just if my wife is all here, I would have so that when you are asking <laughs> me, like me, I want to slap the boy and say, what is that one? What is that one? I don't you see that we're in the panel? Tabatu Walu, you are not too much of what I know. You want to change your underwear, you want to change your teeth for me, you need to change it. For me, after 21 years, what are you talking about? <laughs> The time you were like this, I was there. The time you were flat, uh, the time then, I was there. So why is not bring the thing again? Oh, I wish, I wish mommy is there. <laughs> you know, but you. truly, truly, if, 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 okay. <laughs> Hallelujah. There are, there are still more people going to talk. For. It's, it's scary, so it, don't worry, we're not going anywhere. So we're going home to the last, right? Yes. Is anybody going to work tonight? No. Uh, God is your strength, man. Yeah. But I know that God has, just a moment, God has brought us, we are learning a lot. Mm -hmm. We are learning a lot. Yeah. Now, knowledge is important because great marriage requires knowledge. Yes, and we have come to hear, we have come to learn something. There are so many things that I didn't know. But one thing I will never forget is back home, and it's that is why I think God brought the body to become a passion. Because when I came to to this place, I, I was talking with my sister there, and you know, at the back home in Nigeria, marriage was my marriage was um, could work quicker. Why? Because we will have programs that will talk about this is what you should do as a woman, this is what you should do as a uh, uh, as a wife, as a mother. So it really helped me. Why? Because some of us are not privileged to live with our parents. Uh -huh. So there are some things that normally your mom should have taught you. But um, if by the grace of God you do not live with your mom, you live with your aunt, or you live with one aunt today and in the next three years you're in another place, it will be pretty difficult. Mm -hmm. But the church helped me yeah. as a person because I got knowledge from those things. So, I think that's one of the reasons why God, you know, put this passion. I said, I can't do it, but he said, you can do it. Amen. And it has come to be. Amen. Women in the house, allow your husband to touch you. Now, we know that everything must be done in decency yes. and in order. Yes. See, I'm not, the, I'm not part of those that you say you're you are. Okay, you and your husband, you went out. Maybe you go out on uh, a date or you go um, for a party. And you know, all those days you get dance. Where do you know? Even though you are, you are both couple, you are not supposed to do all of that. But uh, maybe you are, you are at home. Well, you can hold, hold your husband though. Because always remember that that man is the only man that you will have. And he's the only one. <laughs> Maybe we don't understand that. That woman, she's the only one you will ever marry. Right. Yes. Right. That man is the only man. So it is not, uh, it is not let us try if it will work. He is the only one in life and in death. Please, hold your husband. Touching is very important. And we know psychologists too, they say it. Hold your husband. If you are going, see that. On uh, which day? <laughs> we sat at the bank, we were in the graduation center, and I feel like relaxing. I relax on the shoulder of my husband. He's my husband now. That's right. Yeah. Nobody can do that. Who will come and. Uh -uh, it will no sister can do that. <laughs> uh -uh, no sister can be both. So that's why I say, oh, Pastor, can I, re can I rest on your shoulder? You know it's not possible. Yes. And your husband cannot go and hold somebody else's wife. Yes. And so I feel like holding somebody. Since my wife is not allowing me, please, sister, can I hold you? <laughs> Even you, you will not be. Yeah. So please, it's important. You are sending a message, and it is an important message. Sir, what your daughter saw, you don't know. Mm. There, are some, there are some things she's seeing. Mm. 
in couples, but she's not saying my, my dad is a pastor. I know that the only woman in my dad's life is my mom, but they are not seeing it. They are not seeing the closeness. You and your husband cannot be in a place like the way you are sitting there. Sit with your wife. Yeah. <laughs> sit with her very well. When you are going, when you sit with your wife, it's different from when you sit with another sister. Please. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Hold oh, your man, no. Let them know that he is your husband. <laughs> touch him. If he does not want to touch you, touch him. Amen. 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 <laughs> Sorry, I want to quickly say something. Please. I think something is very important uh, in what we are saying, holding one another. I just want to say that um, she, she might have a reason for you know, refusing him. So we just have to be careful that while we are doing that, we don't have Listen. serious attachment to it. Because in doing that, it might be sending a negative message to the children. You know, yes, let, it, let us hold one another. Let it just be ordinary, no mm -hmm. attachment to it, and let's do it frequently. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that it will not be sending a message to the children. Don't let it be when you want to Really do the thing. You want to have sex with your wife. You want to don't let it be only that time that you're not beginning to, to hold your wife, giving her signs yeah. and giving her to know that tonight is tonight. Let's do it freely. That's freely. Right. Do it and move away. Let the children can now see. I want to discover that you do it frequently and you know you don't send any message to them, any negative message to them. Yeah. So it's good to hold, but let's just be careful the way we hold them. I mean, we hold our wife the way we touch one another in the house so that it doesn't send signals, yeah. negative signals. Right. Yeah. I mean, that is very, very important. Yeah. 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 There is no yes. trouble, there is no problem holding, touching, and all those stuff. But some men, you know, they only do that mm. only when they want to. And that's the way they do it. And, you know, <laughs> it's really yeah. the that much trouble. That the much trouble. Yeah. 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 You know? Yeah. Yeah. So that's very important. Thank so please, you so when it's not only when you are doing the Jerusalem. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well. Amen. 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 Talking about what we uh, learned from our fathers, um, I learned, if I can say that, to love. Mm -hmm. Even, you know, my father was a Muslim, mm -hmm. gave Islam at the point of death, mm -hmm. death is that he was an embodiment of love. Wow. Love. Then I used to ask him, that is there every time we do stuff here. We, at a time, we are having like 20 people in our house. Like, if, I, if we have this sit up, I leave my bed, you know, it's, it's, it's not a big deal to me because all those things, you know, I learned from my, from my father. We eat from, you know, the same place. I remember then that my father, if, you know, my mother gave mates. He will call us. He will call the mates. And he will be calling us according to our mm -hmm. popularity. So I know that if you call my sister, I know that I'm the next. Yes. Out of the two or three mates that was given to, to him. Mm. Love. Love, love. Not, you know, not love that, oh, if we talk about you in your presence, they at your back. Love, real love. And if you do anything that it doesn't go well with him, he tells you right there and you move on. Right. Amen. So mm -hmm. I, I want to say I learned that. And you know, when I came to the knowledge of Christ, it's because yes. Jesus is love. Mm -hmm. So it's easy. If I meet you today, you will think that I've known you forever. Mm -hmm. You know, amen. amen. Praise the name Hallelujah. of the Lord. And talking about love telling um our children that i love you i realized something you know um maybe last year mm -hmm. to this year when i'm going to work uh, my daughter was a mommy i love you mm -hmm. in my mind i won't i won't i won't like you I, I don't answer her mm -hmm. i'm telling you i won't answer her. so one day mm -hmm. she spoke with me on the phone and said mommy i love you and i said i love you and something told me, 
you better be saying I love you to this girl. Mm. Because outside, if somebody is telling her I love you, I love you. That's right. She believes. She believes. You mm. better be telling her I love you. So when the mommy I love you, I say ah, I love you, I love you more. Because she's 14 years old, mm. you never know. Yeah, but yeah. In school, yeah. <clears throat> even female to female. Mm. So and I want to encourage my husband. You know, tell them. Yeah, I love you. 